who are you a teacher come here to do do you know who you are inside do you take pride in being you i sure do hope that you do i sure do hope that you do it's a little bit of a trick question because if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm forever telling you, you are not who you think you are. And you are not who other people think you are. So who are you? Well, here's a place to start. I was certified in hypnosis many years ago. And an interesting thing that I learned back then was most people live their lives in a state of hypnosis. In fact, I read it was some phenomenal percentage of how many people go through their day every day in a state of being hypnotized. If you think about it, it might be one of them. People get out of bed, put the first foot down, same one all the time get dressed, put on the same pant leg all the time. They take the same route to work. They take the same route to go shopping. Their habits all day long. They're not thinking about it. They're living on automatic like automatons. So when I was learning hypnosis, what I learned was we're not putting people into a hypnotic state. We're waking them up and taking them out of it. So let's move on from there. Talking about you're not who you think you are. Now, Deepak Chopra is telling you you are not in the universe. The universe is in you. You're not your body and you're not your mind think about it after the body you're in is gone your mind goes with the yes but you continue to exist physics tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed so who you are is a form of energy which means you're not your body you're not your mind you are the awareness. You're aware of what you're thinking. You're aware of what you might be feeling, touching. But that isn't you. You are occupying a body. It takes you from point A to point B across your life so that you can learn the lessons you came here to discover to allow your soul to evolve to a higher level but that doesn't make you your body that is feeding your awareness your awareness is what continues from one lifetime to the next lifetime Put another way, you have a car and your car takes you from point A to point B. You would never dream of saying, I'm a car. So why are you saying, I'm a body? You're not your body. Your awareness, your state of being aware is what's observing and living and moving and growing. In his groundbreaking book, the original one was written in 2009. Robert Lanza, MD and astronomer Bob Berman wrote, the book was Biocentrism. There are a number of books have been written since then, by then and other people too. Their point is, they used science, they used biology and astronomy to show how the world cannot possibly, nothing exists unless 
there is an observer. They answer the question of the tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there to hear it. Does it make a sound? And unequivocally, the answer is no, it can't because it's not the tree falling that's creating the vibrations unless they fall on a hearing mechanism in some animal. Now, I then went further in his book, opened my eyes about, are you ready for this? This is a real fun one, rainbows. So to view a rainbow, your head has to be in the exact right position between the sun and the raindrop and the right angle for you to see the rainbow, which means if your friend standing next to you, well, their head's in a different position and probably in a different angle. They're not going to see the same rainbow that you're seeing. Interesting, don't you think? And it explains why you don't see rainbows when you're in your backyard looking at the water sprinkler spinning round and round. Now, let's go another step deeper. Uh, he preceded the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates. His name was Heraclitus. And he had, he had all these brilliant quotes. And just throwing one out there, you can't step in the same river twice. You've probably heard that one because the river's not the same, right? And you're not the same person. But that's not the one that I want to share with you right here, right now. Because what he said was, out of all things, one, one. And out of one, all things. When you hear uh, all is one, what they're talking about, there's only one awareness, not just in this universe, but out across the entire universe, the multiverses, there's one energy that is awareness. Now, how do you get to discover that awareness, who you really are? Because that's the true you, that's who you really are. If you observe a child up until about the age of two and a half, they only know awareness. If you show a picture to a child that young and they'll see themselves in it, but they'll name themselves in the third person. So they'll say, well, look, that's Bobby. Because they don't have a separate concept. You separate from me. So another quote from Heraclitus, man is most nearly himself when he achieves the seriousness of a child at play. What's he talking about? He's talking about being who you really are. Who you really are is awareness, conscious awareness. And if you look across the ancient mystics, and across different philosophies and across the ancient religions, you will find all of them talking about conscious awareness. My Qigong teacher, who's actually Chinese, he teaches us awakened awareness. So here you have the combination of stop living in a hypnotic state and awaken to who you are because who you truly are, your true self is awareness. Now, Rhonda Burns book that she wrote in 2020 called The Greatest Secret does an incredible job of explaining exactly what awareness is, how to discover it for yourself. And I 
highly recommend the book. In fact, I'll put a link to it down below so you'll be able to find it easily. And I'm kind of thinking I'm going to want to teach on that book. And maybe that's going to be one of the master classes I'll be offering to people who are in ALITLC.club for free. Because when you learn how to find who you are, it makes your world lighter. It gives you a new view of reality. Here's a small, for instance, take your hand, put it in front of your face, and I want you to really look at your hand. And while you're looking, just notice what you're feeling, physically feeling, emotionally feeling, inside. Okay, you got it? Now put your hand down. Now expand your vision to your surroundings, to everything you're seeing that's around you right now. And as you do that, again, notice how you're feeling. You feel lighter, when you're taking in more, you're not locked in having the focus. See, when you're locked in on your hand, that's how you're living. When you think you're a body and you think you're a mind, you're focusing on your beliefs and on your thoughts, but you are not your mind and you are not your thoughts and you are not your beliefs. You're the awareness that's open to all that's around you. Now, I think I'm going to stop here because I don't want to overwhelm you. And I just threw a whole bunch of new stuff at you. But I look forward to the next time we get together. And I'm pretty sure. I'll be seeing you in A-L-I-T-L-C dot club before I see you live here again. Please remember to join our Facebook group. The link is down below in the show notes. In there, ask your questions. Make friends with the other people also on their spiritual path. And share. Let your friends know they can join too. Again, I ask you, please, to rate and review this show. And also, let me know what specific questions you have that you'd like me to cover on this show for you. And also, check out our website for the show, because you can get specific notes for each episode, as well as be able to listen to every single episode that we've always done. You can follow me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and I look forward to getting to know you. Send me messages, send me a DM, comment. I'm here to enrich your spiritual growth. So the more you tell me about what you want to know, the better job I can do for you. I thank you for joining me once again, and I will see you here next time.